Star Wars games in 2024. What can we expect? There's a few things that we already know is coming and there's probably a lot of stuff we don't know about that will most likely show up in 2024 too. So I wanted to start off this year with a video basically going over my expectations of this year with some summaries on the games we know are coming, the games likely to be shown and things like that. I appreciate you all tuning into my live streams lately. I'm having a blast doing these semi-daily streams, checking out both old and new games and I'm also posting on my other channels surprisingly my disc golf channel is actually doing better than any of my star wars content despite having about a fraction of the amount of subscribers that i do on these channels nevertheless i'm happy to see one of the channels doing well at least but back to the main topic what can we actually expect this year obviously there are a few projects that we already know about the first one happening is the anticipated remaster of the star wars dark forces game this one actually comes out on february 20 8th, so it's pretty soon and it's going to be released both on PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S and the Nintendo Switch. So a pretty big release and I'm quite excited for this myself as I have not played Dark Forces but I've heard a lot of good things about it and it's obviously one of the oldest Star Wars games and playing those kind of games on new platforms is usually really buggy. So the fact that they remaster it is great. It's not a remake so the graphics and gameplay will still be like the old version but it's basically going to be upscaled with the resolution 120 fps better cutscenes and things like that so you can definitely expect me to do a full out stream playthrough of that game probably on pc since it is a shooter meaning that personally i prefer to aim with a mouse and keyboard as compared to a controller on any of the other platforms and next up i wanted to talk a little bit about star wars hunters i know i know star wars hunters is just a mobile game and man i'm not sure what to think of this game this game is, in case you didn't know, a mobile slash Switch game that is an arena shooter, I guess you could call it. And it's been delayed multiple times. It was supposed to be released 2022, then 2023, and now 2024. But the weirdest thing about this is that it's still soft launched in some countries. And you know, I keep seeing these new skins popping up, battle passes, ranked mode, new characters. They're pushing it like it's a live game. But it's not. Like, for instance, it's not available in the US, probably the biggest audience. And it's also not available on the Switch, which is why I haven't given it an honest go, because I just do not want to play on my phone. And I'm so conflicted about this game, because it seems like the people who are playing it, even if it doesn't seem to be a lot of them, are really enjoying it. And when I see the game's communication, both from the official accounts, developers, and having like these behind the scenes videos, as sad as it makes me to say, it kind of reminds me of the Battlefront days. These guys really seem passionate about the game, they create these really unique, cool characters that I honestly think are really interesting, but then it's locked into a mobile game that isn't released properly, that isn't marketed properly, it just... Oh, I don't know if I'm supposed to laugh or cry if I'm gonna be honest, it makes me so incredibly frustrated, annoyed and sad, because obviously this team is passionate about the game, they're working on some good stuff, but they just delay the game, but they still release stuff, and that makes it feel like once this actually comes out, are we gonna have like years of content to catch up to the people who have played this for like two years and bought battle passes and all that kind of stuff? I don't know, because if you just look at the game objectively from the outside, if this was a game that was instead released on PC and consoles, I think this would have been a huge hit. It would basically have been a little bit like a Star Wars Overwatch game, but now instead it's being dumbed down into a mobile version, which obviously isn't the same audience, and that just makes me sad, annoyed, I'm not really sure what to say. Again, it seems like the people who are playing it are enjoying it, but it's really not what I hoped for. But all I can say is that once this game does officially release, I will give it an honest go on the Switch, because I just I, there's no way I am playing a shooter game on a phone. Like, that's just not happening. And I know you can play through an emulator, but the little I tried, it was really janky and, you know, not the kind of experience you want with a shooter. So I will give it a go on the Switch when that is out, to see if it's actually worth playing. But overall, it's it's just been an incredibly frustrating experience seeing all the things happening with Star Wars Hunters. They're everywhere. 
So what about the big one then? Star Wars Outlaws. This is by far the project I am most excited for in 2024. Recently there was some confusion in regards to the release of this game as Disney Parks went out and said that the game was going to be released late 2024 which was then actually corrected by them to set the entire year as a release window. The main thing we can take away from that is the fact that the game might actually be released earlier than late 2024. My guess would be something like fall because I don't expect it to be out this summer or even earlier than that. That doesn't make sense considering they haven't pushed much marketing except for the initial reveal last year. And in case you don't know, the quick summary for this game is that it is an open world Star Wars game made by Ubisoft and Massive Entertainment. And you play as Kay Vess who is basically a scoundrel and has her little companion called Nyx. There's five planets confirmed so far, Tatooine with Jabba's Palace, Kijimi, Cantonica which is where Canto Bight is located, Akiva, a planet that has been in some books and stuff before, and also a brand new original planet, Toshara, which is the main planet that we've seen in the gameplay with the big hub and cantina and things like that. The game will feature third person blaster gameplay as well as ship combat in the space with seamless transitions from ground to space as well. Story wise it's set between the Empire Strikes Back and the Return of the Jedi so it's kind of peak Empire where they control as much stuff as they I guess have ever done. And the one thing that I found to be quite interesting is the reputation system where you basically do jobs for various syndicates which will increase your reputation with one of them and potentially decrease the reputation with others so it kind of depends on what path you want to go and the five syndicates that we know about so far is the hot clan crimson dawn pike syndicate black sun and the new one for the game the crimora syndicate so it's kind of a mix of all the new in terms of how big the game is they've actually said that each planet will be as big as two to three zones in assassin's creed's odyssey i honestly haven't played that game so that doesn't really give me an idea of how big it is but based on the reactions it seems like the game is gonna be big so big that people were kind of worried that is this just gonna be like a two or three hundred hour unfinishable rpg and they actually responded to that saying that our objective is to really get people into a very dense rich adventure open world adventure that they can explore at their own rhythm so it is absolutely not a two or three hundred hour epic unfinishable rpg and i think that sounds pretty good i'd rather have a bunch of stuff to do that feels fun instead of having like an unlimited grind that never ends. So those are really the big game projects that we know. Obviously there was a big reveal the other day that we are getting Ahsoka Season 2 as well as Grogu and Mando coming to the big screen. Will that affect the games? Probably not in the short term, but there's been a lot of rumors about a Mandalorian game being in the works for so many years now, but it's still not really on any credible leaks or of course no official word about it either but at this point it's very strange to be honest that no one has made a game about such a popular character as you could basically do anything with him since he's not really locked into a main story you could explore him prior to mando season one or something in between the seasons there's a lot of things you could do with the mandalorian or it doesn't even have to be the mandalorian it could just be mandalorians who knows? I think there will be a game at some point about the Mandalorian, but probably not something that we will hear about this year. So other than that, what can we expect this year? Well, I'm at least expecting one or two other Star Wars games to do some announcements, considering some of them have been in the works for quite a few years now. For instance, Respawn are working both with Bitreactor on a strategy game and also a first-person shooter. I think that first-person shooter is most likely going to be the next game that Respawn will reveal. It's rumored that it's only going to be single player, which is very worrying considering a shooter is something everyone has asked for since they cancelled Battlefront 2. But based on purely the job listings they've had, they've actually called it a story-driven single player first-person shooter. I hope that's not going to be the case and the official marketing might change that. But as of right now, I'm excited for the game, but I'm also very worried at the same time. Quantic Dream are obviously working on Star Wars Eclipse. Very hard to say what's going on with that one considering they released a trailer over two years ago. But we haven't really seen anything from the game after that except for some strange leaks. Talking about how troublesome the development is. Amy Hennig's Star Wars game with Skydance New Media has been like completely dead silence since the announcement. There's been practically no leaks, no info. So that one is also very hard to guess if that's going to be something we hear about this year. Other than the already announced stuff that I talked about, I think my big bet is a reveal for Respawn's first person shooter. 
and potentially also some announcements of more Star Wars games being in the works that will be further in the future. I hope there might be more, I would obviously be happily surprised if we got way more trailers and announcements and maybe even releases this year than I previously mentioned. I guess it's also worth mentioning that we will probably hear something about the KOTOR remake. That game seems to be in development hell, so I think it's basically a 50-50 if they announce that it's cancelled or that they're actually progressing with a new studio. Tricky to say, but I thought I'd throw in a mention anyways. But that's really all when it comes to games and Star Wars, and I would love to hear in the comments below if there's anything that you are particularly excited for about all these games, or if there's something that hasn't been announced that you're really hoping to hear about this year. Battlefront 3, I know, we all want that, but I'm trying to be realistic here. We're not going to hear about Battlefront 3 this year as much as we want to. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, and as always, may the Force be with you. Thank <laughs> you.